if you're working in a Java EE environment and you're using JaxRS, um, I'm just going to give you a quick uh, introduction to how you can wire in EJBs with your JaxRS resource. So the way EJBs are wired in in Java EE is using something called CDI. It's called Component Dependency Injection. It gets a lot of inspiration from the Spring Dependency Injection or the Guava Dependency Injection frameworks. Uh, it basically lets you inject bean instances using annotations rather than look up instances of beans using some kind of a method or a, or a directory. The thing about Java EE CD annotations are it's a bit different from the way the JAXRS annotations work, but you can actually have JAXRS resources converted to these singleton and stateless beans. I'm not going to demo this in code. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how it looks like so that you're familiar with it and you can look up online for more information. So here is an example of a stateless session being defined as a JAXRS resource. So I have a stateless resource over here. It's annotated with at stateless, but I also have the at path annotation that we're already familiar with, with JAXRS. So this kind of makes this a JAXRS resource, which is also a stateless session bean. This works the same way as an EJB typically would, but it is also something that the JAXRS framework picks up for um, handling REST API requests. And similarly, here's an example of a singleton bean being used as a JAXRS resource. You have an at singleton. This is something we've already seen. This at singleton makes this a singleton bean. You also have the at path annotation, which makes it a JAXRS resource. So whatever JAXRS framework you have, or if you're deploying it in a Java EE container, the JAXRS provider for that container knows that this is a JAXRS resource as well. This is where the difference between the EJB way of doing things and the JAXRS way of doing things uh, shows up. Now here is the at request scoped annotation. Now we have beans which can be request scope or application scoped uh, in the EJB world, but you also have the default request scoping for a JAXRS resource. Now in order to make this work, to, in order to make this uh, JAXRS resource a request scoped Java EE resource, what you need to do is annotate it with that request scope. You don't have to do this by default because that's the default scope of a JAXRS resource, but by making this uh, annotations like singleton or stateless or request scope, you're basically wiring this in with the CDI dependency injection of uh, the Java E container. Now this bean can be dependency injected. You can have member variables of this class, for instance, the employee class, which have the at EJB annotation that lets you wire in different EJBs that you already have in your container. So again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. This was a, a very quick introduction about how JAXRS plays with EJB. So you can have them both in the same container and wire them in using CDI, uh, purely using annotations like I've discussed.